The king is dead. Long live the king? Maybe? Maybe not so fast. But damn, if spec sheets determine the best motorcycles, this would get very ugly very quickly for BMW. With this new Tiger 1200, Triumph has aimed its crosshair squarely at the R1250 GS. And if I was sitting in the BMW Motorrad headquarters right now, I might break a sweat. Or not. Why? Stay tuned for the deets. Let's not waste time, Triumph certainly didn't, in making this new for 2022 Tiger 1200 superior to the R1250 GS in every regard. On the spec sheet. What do we know about this new bike? Engine, 1160cc triple with the T-plane crank, just like the Tiger 900. 147 horsepower at 9000 RPM, 13 more than the GS. 96 pound-feet of torque at 7,000 RPM, 9 less than the GS. That power is transferred to the rear wheel via shaft drive and Triumph claims that the Tiger is up to 17 kilos lighter than the closest shaft drive competition based on comparable specs. Hmm, wonder what bike that might be. In addition, as with the Tiger 900, Triumph offers rally and GT models depending on how much the owners foresee taking their 500 plus pound bikes off-road. The GTs are running 19 and 18 inch cast wheels, while the rallies are fitted with 21 and 18 inch wire spoked wheels. There are three variants with 5.3 gallon tanks, as well as two Explorer variants with the massive 7.9 gallon tanks. Weights will range from 529 pounds for the base GT to 575 pounds for the Rally Explorer with the tanks 90% full. As Triumph claims, these undercut all comparably equipped GS models. Triumph also says that the Tigers feel lighter because of their aluminum fuel tanks and alloy subframes which lowers their center of gravity. Prices will vary from country to country but will likewise be comparable to the BMWs for bikes equipped with the same gizmos. In the States, the GT goes for 19,100 while the Rally Explorer starts at 24,200. Electronics? Triumph's giving you electronics. They'd better with 147 horsepower on an off-road-ish bike. The GT gets road, rain and sport modes. The GT Pro and GT Explorer add rider configurable presets and off-road modes, while the Rally models also add a sixth customizable off-road Pro mode. Seat heights are adjustable and will range between 33.5 inches and 35.2 inches, depending on which model you get. The GT models will have a respectable 7.9 inches of suspension travel, while the Rally models will give you 8.7 with all the bikes riding on Showa semi-active electronically controlled suspension. Impressive. Other details? IMU assisted lean sensitive traction control and ABS, 7 inch color TFT dash, cornering lights, quick shifter, hill hold, adjustable screen, keyless operation, and the Explorer models get standard heated grips, seats, tire pressure monitoring systems, and rear facing radar with lane change assist. You get a lot with your Tiger. But you don't tune in here to hear me read a spec sheet, and spec sheets don't win comparisons. The Tiger has some advantages over the GS in some areas, but the GS has advantages over the Tiger that may not be evident until you ride the bikes back to back. First, the engines. The Tiger's edge and horsepower is good but comes at higher revs. At lower revs, where most riders will spend most of their time, expect the Beamer's torque advantage to figure more prominently. In other words, expect it to be as quick or quicker than the Tiger in real world riding. Additionally, expect the BMW's power delivery to be more off-road friendly. Those boxers put the power down to the dirt in a much less peaky way than triples, even T-plane triples, which is important for traction on soft surfaces. Additionally, the boxers also sit low and have a way of making the bike feel lighter than it is. Yes, Triumph tried to emulate this effect with an aluminum tank and subframe, but it remains to be seen if the results will match the BMW. The triple's inherent architecture makes that unlikely. The Tiger Rally's 21-inch front wheel will allow it to truck through the dirt better than the GS's 19-inch one, but the GS's magic suspension makes it remarkably nimble and controllable off-road. So which one performs better on the gravel and dirt remains to be seen. Don't be surprised if the BMW's deficits on the spec sheet disappear on the road and dirt. 
There's a reason these bikes are as popular as they are. I have to say, Triumph outdid themselves with this new design. It looks small, light and athletic and seems to ride that way too, although most folks won't ride it like Ricky Carmichael. Can it knock off the mighty GS with its legions of loyal fans? Probably not, but who knows? Maybe Triumph should hand a couple to Ewan and Charlie and send them… long way somewhere. What do you think of this new bike? Are you in the market for a big bore ADV? Or are you a GS rider and this thing's got you considering a switcheroo? Share your views in the comments and happy adventures. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.